In this Kotlin on Android tutorial, we're going to show you how to create a video streaming application using the video view, such as the demonstration I've got here. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, so we'll make a start with this project. We're going to create a brand new project here. So start a new project. Um, you'll notice I'm using the new version of Android Studio 3.0. And I'm just going to call this a video view. Uh, let's go back. And I'll call this video view streaming so we're going to be using our streaming URI instead of a local one and a note we're including Kotlin support of course I'm going to keep the default settings here we're starting from API 23 going to use our empty activity and I'll just keep the defaults as what we've got here select finish and we'll build that that's now built first thing I want to do is to go into my Android Manifest file here and we're just going to add a couple of permissions because we're streaming the URI from the internet we're going to need internet permission and I also want to add um, the weight lock permission here as well. What this does is the weight lock permission will stop the device going to sleep while you're watching the video, which could be annoying. So set up those two weight locks first, then the next step here is we'll do a bit of work on our layout file. So go into resources, go into layout, and click our activity main layout file here we're just going to do all the work inside the text version here first thing i want to do just for simplicity of this tutorial is to change the constraint layout to a linear layout now we can remove the text view Now, I'm going to actually have two view containers here. Up the top is what you saw in the demonstration, is I want to display the video. And so I'm going to have the video view for that. And then underneath that, I just want a text view. And that actually lives within a scrolling container, so you can scroll that text view. So what I'm going to do here is create a frame layout first, where we match the parent for the width, and we wrap the content with the height and inside that frame layer I'm going to put my video view and I'm going to have to set the same parameters for that match parent and wrap content okay the reason I'm putting the video view inside a frame layout is for the positioning of the video view the video view it's actually for the positioning of the media controller which gives us our play and pause buttons um, there's a sort of anchor positioning point we can set and I want to set that to the frame layout which is this wrapping over there if not that that media controller will probably sit in your main layout itself which may be desirable or not but I just want to just covering the video view which is why I'm using a frame layout anyway I'll give my frame layout an ID because we are going to be referring to that and I'll just call it the video container okay now let's do a bit more work on our video view uh, we'll need an ID for that as well and I'll just call this video view <laughs> Something I can nice and easy to remember. And we also want to add a progress bar for this as well. So just to show the user we're doing something while we're loading and buffering the video. 
So underneath the video view, this will also go inside the frame layout, Let's hit a progress bar. In this case, I'm just going to wrap the content for both of these. Uh, oops. And I'll also need to give that progress bar an ID. And I'll just call it progress bar. Something nice and easy for me to remember. And I'm going to set the visibility of the progress bar to invisible for the moment. And I also want to set the layout gravity for that at the center, which is another reason for using the frame layout quite easy for that. Okay, that should be all the work we need to do for our video view. Then underneath that, I just want to populate the remainder of the real estate in your application just with something. So it's going to be a scrollable text view, but it could be anything. It could be a web view, whatever, or a map. Think of it. But just for the ease of this tutorial, we're going to put in a um, text view. But first I want a scroll, scroll view. And the scroll view will be, we'll set match parent for both of those parameters. And in Skydive scroll view, we're going to have our text view. And the text view is for the width, we'll match parent. And for the height, we'll wrap our content for that. And I'm just going to set the text for that. It's going to be a string name, which is proper Android naming convention. And I'm just going to call this lip sum because I'm just going to grab some text for that. So if I press my Alt Enter here on a Mac, I can create a string value for that. Press Enter. And it just needs the value of the string. So if I go back into my browser here, I'm just going to copy the contents here, go back into Android studio and just paste that into here select ok and that's uh string view there and we're also you notice we're getting a bit of a warning here we need to specify the orientation for our linear layout so we'll just select orientation equals vertical and that will remove that save that Okay, we're going to move across to the main activity now and do the coding for this. Inside our main activity, I want to add a couple of activity members. And the first one is going to represent the playback position. This happens when we pause or we leave the actual video streaming application and we want to return. This will save the position so we can resume playing instead of going back to the beginning. So I'll call this playback position. And I'm going to set it a value of zero. And of course, in Kotlin, we'll infer the type from the value, which will, in this case, will be an int. And we're also going to need the uh, URR, URL address for playing the streaming video. And I'll set that up. And I'm going to call it, it's going to be a real time streaming URL. So I'll call it real time streaming URL equals. And I'm going to jump across to my website here. And I'm just going to grab the Bugs Bunny one here. So I'm just going to highlight inside the speech marks and go back to our code here and paste that in. So that's the address there. Okay, the next step here is I'm just going to implement the activity lifecycle uh, methods. The yeah, on start, on stop, and on pause. Okay, so I'll do that underneath on create. So I'll do on start first. Okay, so the very first thing I want to do here is to get a URI from our address up here. And I'll just call this URI. Because URI dot, we need to pass in that address. And it'll be the real time RSP URI. Okay, and now I can call my video view and set that URI. 
So this is a video view from activity, nice and easy for a Kotlin extension. And we'll just go set video URI and pass in our URI. And I just want to do one more thing here, and so I just want to make our progress bar visible. called view.visible okay that should be the only things we need to do here one thing I just want to highlight this point here when we call the video set video URI it's going to go across and start our buffering and setting up our video for playback that takes time it's not going to happen straight away so we're not going to start called play the video just yet we're going to wait for the preparation phase to complete so we'll set up a listener for that after we've set up the other lifecycle methods okay so let's do on pause okay so it's just the math here of pausing the video video view pause and at this stage here is I want to save the playback position here as well because we could be leaving the application and returning so this is a good place to get an update of our playback position so we'll call our playback position member and now we can call our video view current position in Kotlin, get current position in Android. Okay, I've gone and stuffed up here a little bit. We're gonna change this to a variable. Notice how I set value here. It can only be set once, so we'll change that to a variable. Okay, so that's now sorted. Okay, that should be fine for on pause. Let's move across to on stop. Okay, for on stop, um, we can just call the video view and stop playback. And just for tidiness, I'm gonna put this above the constructor here um, so stop the playback, then let on stop do the cleanup or the, all the other remaining resources in the application. So it's normally good practice to do that there. Okay, so these are the lifecycle methods are now set up. So remember when I talked about the video view set URI, we go into a preparation, a buffering and all that. I want to know when that's completed so I can start playback. So I can set up a listener for that. Um, oh, I think I'll do that in the on create. I'll set up my listener. So we'll call video view. And this will be set on prepared listener. I'll use the Kotlin implementation for this. So once we once this once this listener gets called we'll know the preparation state's completed and we're now in a position to start playing that internet that, that streaming video so we can call the a video view and what i want to do is call seek 2 because if we've exit if we've switched to another application return to this we want to start from where we left to. So seek to position will take us to that position in the video playback. And I'll call playback position. And now I'll call video view. And what do we got? Start. And that will now start the video. So it's important you set this uh, um, set on prepared listener just to get activated because streaming a video from a mobile device if your internet's not so fast it's going to take a bit of time so you'll need that this to happen in the background and um, not affect your main UI thread
Now, so we've got video playing, but I want to add some control buttons. I want to add a play and a pause button to that, do that. And in this case, I'm going to use a media controller to do that. So first thing I want to do here is to create a value for that media controller. I'm going to use a light in it there, so we'll initialize that in the on create. Anyway, we'll call this the media controller. And it is a widget of the type widget at top there. Okay, now I can initialize that in the on create method. So we'll call our media controller equals media controller and pass in the activity object for that. Okay, so we've now initialized the media controller. Now I need to set up where I want that media controller to be displayed, which is right on top of our video view. And, and then I also want to set the video controller into our video view so we get the playback buttons. So I'm gonna do that in the unprepared listener is a good place for that. So first thing is the positioning. So we'll call our media controller. And was it set anchor view as our uh, let's go back to our layout there make sure we've got the name right name there so it's the video container that I want to anchor the media controller to in other words put inside there so video container and now it's a matter of setting the media controller to our video view. So we'll call our video view and let's set the media controller with the media controller. So we now have play pause buttons for our video view. And finally, we've got the little matter of just turning off our progress bar. That's been going all this time. So I want to put a listener for that when to turn it off. And so on inside our on create, we can call the video view. And that's the set on info listener. And we'll go for the Kotlin implementation here. Just let me rename that to player this argument is what and this is extras as the parameters being passed okay so what I want to do here is just to check the what value if it equals and we'll call our media player object so we'll use this if the media info rendering start is equal to that and so basically this value here is me means that we can start playing the rendered video so it's right just before we start playing so it's a good position to turn off our progress bar so if that's true we can call our progress bar visibility view invisible and underneath this this listener does require a boolean to whether or not it's being consumed so I'm just going to type there true in other words we have consumed that value okay and that should be all the changes we need to make so let's run this and see what happens And as you can see, the applications now are playing. I have muted the sound there. So successful playback. Now let's see if the media controller shows up or not. And there you have there, that's the media controller and the media controller button. So we select pause, it will be paused. And we set play, it plays back. So that we've successfully implemented streaming a video off the internet using a video view. And that concludes the video view streaming tutorial. Just to summarize, we basically learned how to set up a video view. We learned about the process states of putting a listener in place to learn when the video has completed buffering. 
and we introduced the MIDI controller where we could add buttons, play and pause buttons to our video view. So if you want to get notified of this uh, future tutorials that I'm working on, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. And if you want to get in contact with me and you want support for your project or you want to learn Android or you want to learn Kotlin on Android, I'm now providing a free 10 minute consultation call. So that can just be a normal voice call or a video call or we could even have a chat. Um, you can schedule it from here and it does need to be done in a day or two in advance just so I can free up my time for that particular um, meeting but I'm um, yeah I'm well happy I'm happy just to spend a spend a few minutes and coming together with a plan just to help you with your projects or with learning Android or Kotlin programming anyway that's it for this one thank you for taking the time to watch this bye for now